Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we have our second uh, speaker for our numerical analysis seminar. Um, our speaker is Dr. Jamie Haddock. She's a assistant professor from uh, Habimad College uh, in the math department. Her research focuses on uh, mathematical data science, optimization, and applied convex geometry. Uh, before starting at Harvey Mudd College, uh, Dr. Haddock received her PhD from UC Davis, and then she was a CAM assistant professor at UCLA. Uh, she is active in many interesting areas, including randomized numerical linear algebra, combinatoric methods for convex optimization, tensor decomposition for topic modeling, and many, many other problems uh, relating to uh, graphs. So today, uh, she's going to show us the connections between iterative methods for linear systems and consensus dynamics on networks. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jamie. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Hangji. And uh, thanks, everyone in the audience. Thank you for this uh, nice invitation. I'm really happy to be here. Happy to see some familiar faces. So, um, And thank you, Hangji, for handling my what felt like an exceptionally long title so gracefully in the introduction. Um, so yeah, so today I'm going to try to kind of talk a little bit about some connections that I'm finding um, between some interesting problems on networks and graphs. Um, and an area I've worked in for quite a while, which is studying iterative and randomized iterative methods um, in numerical linear algebra. All right. So first, um, a little bit of an outline of, um, of the talk. I'm going to talk um, about uh, uh, kind of largely um, focus mainly in on one work that's just recently been accepted to um, transactions on information theory. This is joint work with um, uh, Benjamin Jarman, who is currently a PhD candidate at UCLA, um, an undergrad um, who's now gone on to bigger and better things, Chen Yap. And I'll um, allude to some work that I'm that is now ongoing with my um, Harvey Mudd student Hector Tierno, and there's a couple of other people who are who are involved at this point. Okay, so a quick outline. So I'm gonna talk um, kind of an introdu introduce or, or, or remind us all of kind of a family of um, problems, which I'll call consensus dynamics on networks. So the, the kind of example that I'll go into in more detail there is average consensus, but um, really this is a, a family of, of problems and, and kind of, I don't know, a, a, there's like a feeling you have of, of these problems that arises all over um, applied mathematics. Um, and I'm I'm just learning about some of these areas uh, for the, the first time. Um, I'll make some connections between the consensus dynamics um, and uh, iterative methods for linear systems and specifically the family of methods um, today that I uh, like to think about um, are Kashmar's methods. Um, so, um, and I should say this bridge that I'm going to allude to is not new. Other people have noticed it, but I'm um, especially excited about it. And, and I'll show you one way we've exploited it and some ways we're hoping to exploit it in the future. And, and like I said, I'll make this bridge between these two areas. Um, we'll focus in on this one work, but this is ongoing and, and hopefully we'll um, other people will find this exciting as well. Okay, so um, focusing in on consensus dynamics. So um, uh, we're going to imagine that we've got a graph, right? Our graph has nodes N and edges E. And the dynamics portion of this is focused in on these values CK of I. These are scalar values assigned to each of the nodes, node I, um, and they're changing over time. That's the dynamic part. Um, so this is the time at, or the value at time K. And consensus dynamical systems are uh, dynamical systems where the node values, these CK values, are evolving over time. Um, they're changing their internal states according to interactions between the nodes and the values on the nodes. And this is being applied in, I'm considering discrete time, at every time step. Okay, so it, you know, there's, this is a, <laughs> obviously a very broad description of a set of, of uh, dynamical systems, and they pop up all over the place. So some of the places that I've been thinking about are opinion dynamics. Um, this 
um, pops up in voting and ranking models, interacting particle systems. I mean, it's important in combinatorial matrix theory, systems biology, Markov chains. Like, you know, the picture just goes on and on. The list is long, and this is not even nearly complete. Um, I'm going to highlight um, an application from distributed computing, but really it's a, a toy problem that I think you'll see is a problem uh, that would pop up kind of all over applied mathematics, you know, these areas and others. Okay, and, and I should say that there are a lot of different model types that really fall into this. Oh. I have a question. What yeah. does consensus means you try to make a consensus or yeah yeah so we'll we'll get there I'll, I'll give you kind of the stereotypical example in in some sense this just means dynamical systems where the this internal uh kind of updating step is trying to lead them locally towards some sort of global consensus um and there, there's a bunch of different models of this kind of the stereoty stereotypical example is average consensus where all of the all of these scalar values are trying to head towards the global average of all of the initial scalar values um but there's many ways that this could happen and and so some of the models that fall into this um this family this kind of family of consensus dynamics models are discrete state majority models where um the the scalar these scalar values are actually discrete and the uh the kind of network of nodes are trying to come to um a voting majority right they're trying to all agree upon a single discrete state um these are kind of the same um mm -hmm. there are this oh go ahead I'm sorry, I thought, was there a question? No, no, thank you, I see. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, there's multiple ways in which um, uh, these kind of discrete states can be agreed upon. Um, it can be majority, it can be a, some, some other type of voting system, it could be the median um, value. Um, we're going to focus in on a non-discrete, much, much easier to handle um, family of models known as averaging models. Okay, so the example, like the stereotypical example here is average consensus. Okay, so again, we've got our, our problem is defined on a graph. It's undirected, connected, we assume it's connected with nodes N and edges E. And um, each node at time K has this scalar value CK of I. And the average consensus problem, as I mentioned earlier, is to compute iteratively the average value of all of the initial values um, at every node. Okay. But the kind of important part is um, that we want to use only local communication on the graph, um, communication that's respected by the graph topology, right? We're not looking, this is a problem where we want solutions, ways of solving this problem um, on the graph um, that don't require, you know, um, something naive, like a, a, a secondary node comes in, asks all of the nodes, regardless of their who they're connected to, for their secret value, um, averages those, and then distributes that back. Okay, so um, again, this problem we, we see a lot in distributed computing, so you can imagine, um, like in, you know, typical distributed computing applications, you wouldn't want communication that's really costly and um, and uh, global in some sense, you want local communication. Okay, so um, I think I give, I'll give an example in just a moment, but let me say just the problem of average consensus um, already has a ton of real world applications. So in, in parallel computing, um, when you have all of these um, worker nodes, um, the goal of load balancing can be modeled by the average consensus problem network clock synchronization, right? You want um, you know, clocks on the same network to have roughly the same um, time. Uh, you don't want them to repeatedly have to be asking um, all of their neighbors what their values are. And so we have this um, goal of uh, kind of local communication only leading to the synchronization, coordination of mobile autonomous agents, distributed data fusion, uh, page rank, all of these um, kind of decentralized applications um, end up uh, often being able to be modeled or, or being able to use solutions for the average consensus problem. 
Oh, and I guess I cut the example. So let me just say the average consensus problem um, on this network that we're seeing um, would attempt to, in some sense, only use local communication. Nodes would talk only to the, uh, the neighbors that they're connected to um, in each time step in order to uh, iteratively progress towards um, the average of all of the um, the average of all of their initial secret values. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna um, uh, talk really briefly just about one uh, technique for solving uh, the average consensus problem, um, which is known as the gossip method or, or gossip methods. Um, so this is a family of methods in which the nodes are allowed to gossip across edges or across groups of edges um, to their neighbors about their secret values, updating their value um, to something that they suspect is closer to the global average of the initial secret values um, over time. Okay. Um, the, so the block gossip method is um, one in which groups of nodes are uh, communicating across these edges. So, so let me describe it. Um, so given our graph G, and our initial values at all of the nodes and some subset of, of um, some group of edge subsets. So T here contains all of these um, subsets of edges of the graph. Um, and the gossip method says that in each iteration, we'll randomly activate one of those sets of edges, tau, um, we'll look at the edge-induced subgraph of G defined by the edges in tau. And then the nodes in each of the connected components um, of that induced subgraph, G tau, average their values across their edges. Okay. Nodes outside of G tau are not activated. They don't have the opportunity to do anything. Um, and this produces the new secret values. So at the next iteration, the nodes that were activated have been averaged with all of their neighbors in this induced subgraph. And then the um, uh, nodes outside of their uh, outside of that induced subgraph haven't changed at all. Okay, so um, here is an example um, of one iteration of this method. Um, in this it in this iteration, the edges connecting negative 17 and 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and 1.9 are activated. The induced subgraph is then those that path on those three nodes. And after averaging, right, we've got negative 17 plus 0 0.1 uh, plus 1.9, that's negative 15, right? They all end up with the secret value at the first time step of negative five. And all of the nodes that were outside of that induced subgraph haven't changed. Their values remain the same. Okay. And um, uh, one thing I should say is that um, if you're coming at this from, um, you know, other areas of dynamical systems, um, you maybe might recognize this as a, a particular form of opinion dynamics model. Um, this is sometimes uh, referred to as the Defont wise book model, but unbounded um, in this case. Okay, are there questions at this point? Okay, great. Okay, so there's a uh, multiple, like the, the block gossip methods is a big family of methods. And there's a few that have um, popped up that we'll um, focus in on because um, our analysis applies. Um, that is path gossiping. This is where the block of edges um, that are activated in each, each iteration um, is a single path through some subset of nodes. Um, there is clique gossiping. Okay, so the, the picture is actually changing here. I don't think you can see it, but okay. So we've got path. That's the three nodes are connected by these two bolded edges. Clique gossiping is where the block of edges activated in each iteration is some clique. Um, here you can see it's the uh, uh, triangle on these three nodes. And then finally, um, another a popular block gossip method is called the edge independent set gossiping. Okay, this is in which um, the subset of edges that are activated is an edge independent set, meaning that the edges 
no no pair of edges share a node in common right they're disjoint edges um so like in this example if the edges uh, that were activated the edge independent set that was activated were the edges connecting negative 17 and 84 and negative 9 and 60 we can see that those edges um the two nodes connected by them are averaged but every you know they don't interact across pairs of edges which is a little bit simpler uh, just a quick question uh so uh if you look at the original Gaussian method that you introduced earlier. Uh, so those subsets of edges, do you have any constraints on them? Like, do they have to be uh, like disjoint from each other or can you have overlap where anything would work? Yeah, so so um, uh, the, the subset of the, let me go back. So this T, um, the group of possible subsets of edges that can be activated. Um, generally, we don't think of them as having constraints. Um, if you uh, have, for example, a, sub, a, a set of subsets of edges that entirely miss some node, leaves a node isolated out of every edge-induced subgraph, then this won't be able to achieve um, consensus on the connected graph. Um, but as long as you are able to reach every node and um, some other mild assumptions, you'll be able to achieve consensus with really any um, set of subsets of edges. It's just that um, these po popular block gossip methods add these constraints onto um, the, these subsets of edges. So here is paths, then it's cliques. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, may I ask another question? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what's the intuition for sampling from uh, edges versus nodes? Because ultimately, you're sampling some edges and then you're completing the nodes. So why not just sample the nodes directly? Uh, yeah. Um, so it has to do with mass preservation. Um, okay. So you know, if, like I, I, one of the one of the um, kind of models that we might think of would be grab one node, ask it to look at its neighbors, and then average, it, it just averages the values it set, sees and only updates itself. Um, mm -hmm. That won't be mass pre preserving, and so it won't lead to consensus. So. Um, okay. Um, but may, may, okay. I, I think I wasn't suggesting uniform sampling on the nodes, but maybe there is a sampling on the nodes that does preserve. Uh, but, okay, I see your point. But yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, and I guess I should say there are methods that are kind of more node centric, but they require kind of systematic activation of groups of nodes at once. Like just you really have to preserve um, preserve the mass, and so you can achieve that with node centric methods. It's just a little bit more complicated. Okay, than... thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, that's all I'm going to say about consensus dynamics, right? We've got this kind of general idea of um, what consensus dynamics um, are. Really, we're going to focus in on the average consensus problem. Um, and now I'm going to introduce some of the iterative methods um, for linear systems that are relevant to us. Okay, so um, first of all, just a, a reminder about iterative methods for linear systems. So many of the classical numerical linear algebraic iterative methods for solving linear systems that we have probably taught and, and know and love um, operate using just row or column subset information um, from the linear system um, and or or you know both they sometimes um, operate entry wise on the iteratives. Um, so examples of these kind of types of methods are Kashmars methods. Kashmars methods typically use some subset of the row information um, of a linear system in every iteration. Jacobi methods, on the other hand, um, work entry-wise on iterates or otherwise um, you can think of sometimes use column subset information. Gauss-Seidel, the same. Coordinate descent, the same. Okay, so um, Kashmars methods are sort of row centric, Jacobi, Gauss, Seidel, and coordinate descent are sort of column centric. We're going to focus in on the Kashmars methods today, although the bridge that I'm talking about, I think, kind of naturally applies to all of these uh, methods. Okay, so um, an example of a method in this area is the block Kashmars method. Okay, so the block Kashmars method um, 
takes in some linear system defined by measurement matrix A and measurement vector B. Um, and then it's going to iteratively produce better and better approximations to um, the solution or a solution uh, to the system if it exists. Um, so it begins with some initial iterate x0. Um, and we're going to imagine there are these sets of row indices t um, that we're allowed to sample from. And in each iteration, uh, the method is going to randomly sample one of these subsets of the rows, tau uniformly at random from the list of all of those that are allowed. And then the method simply projects the previous iterate onto the solution space defined by the subset of rows sampled. Okay, so um, over here I've I've got an example picture. Um, so here are um, uh, here is a system with three equations, right? Three, one, two, three. Um, the solution is denoted here at the intersection of these three planes. Um, x star. We've got our um, iterate xk minus one, and we're imagining that the row, the set of rows that was sampled in this k minus first iteration is um, uh, these two, the kind of teal and green um, rows. Um, so the uh, method iterates by projecting orthogonally, this is the expression for the orthogonal projection, of um, the k minus first iterate onto this solution space, right? The solution space between these two equations is the line. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions there? So this method just um, works over and over again using these um, subsets of the of the system, row subsets of the system. Okay, so um, really quickly, this is like a, a little bit taking us off the path just for a second, because I want to want to mention um, one of the um, kind of first and primary results regarding the block cache Mars method, um, which is uh, in this paper I'm citing at the bottom of Deanna, uh, Needell, and Joel Trop. Okay, so um, there's you can imagine there might be lots of ways of sampling or choosing the subset of rows that are considered in um, each iteration. Okay, um, one uh, kind of particularly nice set of possible subsets of rows that you could sample is known as a row paving. So a D alpha beta row paving of a matrix A is a partition um, of the sets of the set of all rows into these block components. Um, tau i, um, such that the matrices induced by each of these row subsets, um, the, the Gramian of that those matrices have minimum eigenvalue bounded below by alpha and maximum eigenvalue bounded above by beta. So every one of the blocks sort of is nicely conditioned. The Gramian is, um, has controlled spectrum. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to introduce just a, a, another piece of notation that we'll use that we'll actually focus on um, in our uh, convergence analysis, which is upcoming. Okay, so um, a row paving is this partition of the row indices so that all of the eigenvalues are um, bounded between alpha and beta. Um, a row covering, however, is not a partition. It's simply a collection of these row subsets that cover all of the rows okay, and have um, bounded minimum positive uh, eigenvalue and, oh, sorry, have um, bounded um, minimum positive eigenvalue all the way up to maximum eigenvalue. Okay. Um, we give ourselves some additional notation. Um, these aren't super important. These just count the redundancy. Little r and capital R measure kind of how many times one of these rows appears um, in each of the in e in the set of um, subsets of rows. Okay, so um, we're heading 
towards, uh, I'm going to give you kind of an example of the way of utilizing um, this bridge between consensus dynamics and iterative methods. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of give you a more general sense of, of what you can do. Okay, so um, the bridge here is that we're going to take the consensus dynamic problem, reformulate it as just a normal linear system or least squares problem, and then um, take results that we know about um, iterative methods on linear systems to pull back and give us a convergence result about the dynamics on um, the consensus dynamics problem. Okay, so the map here is that we'll formulate average averaging consensus, average consensus here, as a homogeneous linear system using, there's lots of different ways you can do this. We'll focus in on the incidence matrix system, which I'll, I'll remind us all about in a moment. We'll describe the local updates that are happening in the dynamical system as an iteration of some numerical linear algebraic iterative method. And then we'll apply or develop theory from numerical linear algebraic theory of iterative methods um, and algebraic graph theory to pull back and say something about the consensus dynamics model. So examples here are, um, you know, to say something about the convergence rate to some specific state, or what is the limiting state, um, etc. Kind of anything you might be interested in um, on the consensus dynamics side, you might try to reformulate as a problem, uh, as a question about the method in the numerical linear algebraic sense. Um, so this this model, this kind of bridge, this idea is is not new. Um, uh, there are other people who've who've done this and thought of this. I'm giving one example, um, one recent example. Nicholas Loizu and and Peter Rich Tarek um, give a really nice framework for kind of how to use this bridge um, in one particular example. Okay, so um, first let's talk about reformulating. Um, the consensus dynamics problem on the graph into some linear system. So here is our, our graph. We've got um, these six nodes and, oh, I should have counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges, I believe. Yeah, seven edges. Okay. Um, and the um, matrix representation is going to be useful to us here. Um, is the incidence matrix. Okay, so a reminder, the incidence matrix associated to a graph is uh, a matrix that is um, either number of rows by, or sorry, number of nodes by number of edges or vice versa. And the entries are um, all one, zero, and negative one. The one and negative one indicate um, the kind of um, pair of nodes connected by each edge. So my um, incidence matrix is number of edges by number of nodes. That's the um, way I'm going to represent it. Um, and every edge has a single one and negative one indicating um, the nodes that are connected by that edge. Okay, one and the order of the one and negative one is arbitrary. I just I just chose it arbitrarily here. Okay, so um, here if we look at um, nodes one and two, they are connected by an edge. So we've got a one and a negative one um, indicating this first edge, right? We've got a one and negative one and one and three, right? And one and six and so on and so forth. We can fill out the, the incidence matrix. Okay, and so what we then can take, we can make this um, connection is that the, the block gossip method, if we're using blocks of edges tau, is actually just producing exactly the same iterates as block cashmars performed on um, the homogeneous linear system um, AX equals B, where um, A is the incidence matrix and B is the all zeros vector. Um, as long as we start at the initial iterate x0, which is equal to the vector of all of the node's secret values. Okay. Um, and, and this requires, of course, that the row blocks that we're sampling in block cashmars are exactly the same as the um, edge blocks that are being sampled for block gossip. But the, the behavior between these two is exactly the same. 
Okay, so the block gossip method, what we've shown is that this is a special case of the block Kashmir's method for a specific linear algebraic formulation of the average consensus problem. All right, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna present the um, main uh, theoretical results, but I'll, I'll say it's a little bit dense, so bear with me. I'll try to I'll try to kind of explain it slowly. So I'm going to focus first on the general um, convergence result for the block Kashmir's method before I bring us back and 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 specialize it to the average consensus problem. Okay, so the the result here says let's imagine you have some least squares problem defined by uh, matrix A and vector B. We don't imagine that A needs to be full rank. It could be um, not full rank. Um, we have some row covering, right? It doesn't need to be a row paving of all of the rows of A with parameters D, alpha, beta, little r, and capital R. We imagine running the block Kashmir's um, method on the uh, system defined by A and B with initial iter at x0. And we're asking ourselves, um, how quickly is x are these iterates x converging to um, the least squares solution to the problem? OK, and what we can show is that the expected uh, squared error between the jth iterate and our least square solution um, is up to some convergence horizon depending on um, the infeasibility of the least squares problem. Um, it's up to that convergence horizon. It's converging exponentially or linearly, however you like to think about it. Um, and our convergence um, term, this, this uh, coefficient that is um, decreasing, um, depends upon the parameters of our um, row covering and the minimum positive singular value of um, the matrix A. Okay. Um, can I ask a couple of questions? Absolutely, please do. So is X star like the minimum norm solution because the solution is not unique, right? If A is not full rank? Uh... Yes. Um... So there's a vector in the null, there's potentially a vector in the null space that you can add to make the solution. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we, <laughs> the paper was recently revised and resubmitted and I didn't update this and I'm trying to think about exactly how we, we wrote the solution. Yeah, I think you can take any X star in the set of minimizers, as long as you define the error in terms of whichever one you've selected. Well, but the error will not be affected by that component. Uh, yeah. So okay. regard. Yeah. Yeah. So regardless, so take, I think it's just if you can take, if you take any of the, sol the least square solutions. Okay. Um, and the second is, where's the expectation? So, so presumably there is some measure on or something right so can you just talk about yeah we're assuming that the um we're assuming that the uh row um sam the row subsets are sampled uniformly at random from the possible set um and does it matter which so uniform but but, but the, the the sizes of tau one they're not individual comp they're, they're like Block, you're, this is a block, right? So tau one is a block. Yeah. So does it matter how many components you select? And um... oh yeah, uh, let's see. Let's see. I, so I I think that I I maybe neglected to put a size constraint here. I think we're asking that they are all the same size. OK. Yeah, this is a great question. Sorry, I, I think um, I, I neglected to say that they were all the same size. OK, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. Other questions? 
Okay, so you know, I'm leading us to this um, application to the average consensus problem where we're going to want to show um, convergence of the nodes secret scalar values to this global average, which we can do. But I just want to highlight that, you know, this result by itself might be interesting for other applications. So um, uh, there's a kind of typical result from 2014 of Vienna Niedel and Joel Tropp um, that's very uh, kind of akin to this one, the block Kashmir's convergence result. Um, but we generalize it in several ways. So the first thing is that we generalize to the case when the least squares problem is, is rank deficient. We relax the requirement that the row samples um, be sampled from the matrix paving, um, which is, is very restrictive and requires um, kind of a strict partitioning. And we demonstrate that the convergence horizon depends upon the minimum non-singular, non-zero, excuse me, singular value. Um, of the blocks a tau rather than the absolute minimum singular value. And this is really important. I mean, I think in a lot of applications, but definitely for the average consensus application, because the matrix in question, the incidence matrix, is not full rank and so has minimum singular value zero. So, in a, you know, without this kind of generalized result, if we were to apply the known bounds, um, they would have been meaningless. Uh, they wouldn't have given us any bound at all. Okay. Okay. So we've got the the block gossip method is a special case of the block Kashmir's method. Um, we've got this block Kashmir's convergence result, and so now we're going to get just directly as a corollary a convergence result for the block gossip method. Okay. So the block gossip method brings us back um, to the average consensus problem. So imagine we've got this underlying graph G um, that's connected. We define our incidence matrix the way that I, I introduced before. And we've got this set of, um, of row subsets that form a row covering for the incidence matrix, which is really in some sense um, uh, asking something about the, the edge subsets on the graph. Um, in this case, then the block gossip method with blocks determined by um, the row subsets in T converges um, in expectation at least linearly, right? And the guarantee is that the expected squared error between um, the norm of the vector of all of the kth secret scalar values and the vector that has um, the average of all of the global initial scalar values um, repeated is decreasing um, in this exponential way. Right. And the um, convergence um, coefficient here depends on um, parameters um, governing the redundancy of the um, edges of the edges that are sampled, um, the algebraic connectivity of the graph G or the um, uh, this is the smallest non zero singular value uh, squared of the instance matrix. Um, and it's just um, bounded above using this coefficient that's the kind of initial energy between the initial scalar values and the total vector of averages. Okay, so this is probably not extremely like shocking given what I've showed you. And I just want to highlight one thing to notice here is that we've really not used, um, you know, in the, the block Kashmir's method, I pre presented it for a least squares problem, potentially a linear system. Um, with no solution. And we didn't actually need that here because, of course, the homogeneous um, system defined um, with the incidence matrix um, has a, uh, is, is consistent. Okay. okay, any questions at this point? Okay, so I'll, I'll just really quickly specialize this um, so that you can see how this result gives us kind of more specified convergence results for the popular block gossip methods I mentioned at the beginning. So if all of the um, uh, subs of all of this, the set of possible subsets of edges T um, consist of uh, independent edge sets, then this rate constant, um, we can specialize a little bit. It still depends upon the redundancy of the edges appearing in the samples, um, the algebraic connectivity, but then um, uh, the 
uh, number of blocks, but beta here, this kind of upper bound on um, the largest eigenvalue of the Gramian is just two. We get something very similar um, when the um, when the subsamples consist of a clique or path subgraphs, then we just get this upper bound using four. And we can handle arbitrary connected subgraphs. Um, we just have the rate constant here being bounded above by, um, by M. Uh, sorry, the rate constant is bounded above by this term, which depends upon capital M. Okay, so um, this is the um, uh, kind of total example of um, the bridge, but I'll, I'll comment a little bit on um, why I think this exci is exciting. Um, so there's this natural bridge, we've seen it between um, the uh, block Kashmars method and these block gossip methods, which are really special cases of, of models appearing all over uh, dynamical systems. Um, and we can exploit these all over the place. Um, so we've seen it for distributed consensus, for average consensus. I'm especially interested, though, in seeing how um, we can use these numerical linear algebraic method results um, in opinion dynamics. Um, so in opinion dynamics, they do this kind of averaging scheme, but with bounds um, meant to model how um, uh, people actually truly interact on social networks. Um, I'm interested here in, in also in ranking models um, where there's really interesting graph topology under the um, under the the models. Um, and uh, I think it could be applied in Laplacian system based solvers. I think we could use kind of pull results the opposite direction. Um, so one of the kind of places I'm currently going with um, my research students uh, is to try to use these numerical linear algebraic results to tackle more complex models. So um, bounded confidence models and opinion dynamics, models with imperfect communication. Um, and, I'm, and to do that, I'm, I'm sort of looking to this really growing literature of um, results about uh, iterative methods in numerical linear algebra um, to find variants that are sort of um, mo best modeling uh, the dynamics um, that are happening over in the, the kind of applied problems. Okay, so um, in some, some ongoing work um, with my student Hector, um, we showed that the Hegselman Krauss model in opinion dynamics, which is really a node centric model, um, can actually be analyzed using a convergence results um, from the Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel method um, literature. In fact, if you've taught um, numerical analysis to undergraduates, you probably taught some of the results um, that we can use to analyze these, these kind of very interesting opinion dynamics models. Um, we're working right now on analyzing a family of bounded confidence models um, that are both kind of edge and node centric using um, residual bounded iterative methods in numerical linear algebra. Okay, so the future work that we're working on currently, because this was developed, these slides were developed a little bit, a little bit ago, um, we're analyzing bounded models through the framework of residual constrained iterative methods. We want to understand the limit of consensus models by using the understanding of um, numerical linear algebraic theory for iterative methods, right? Over there, there's kind of a lot of understanding of when these methods work and when they fail. And I'm hoping that we can kind of bring even those, those limitation results over to consensus models and consensus dynamics. And then eventually I'd like to extend all of this work to um, models on hypergraphs as that seems to be a really growing um, body of literature in a lot of the consensus dynamics um, areas. Okay, so just a, a quick reminder of what we saw today. The average consensus problem can be formulated as a least squares problem or really just a linear system. Uh, we get this one-to-one -one correspondence between these popular gossip methods 
and a special case of, of the Kashmars methods. And so the convergence results that we then prove for these Kashmars methods just provide us immediately as corollaries convergence results for the Gossip methods. Okay. And the hope, of course, is that this will be exploited for these other and more interesting consensus dynamics on networks problems. Thanks. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for the nice talk. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, if I may. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, is, have you thought about um, the analogs of, um, I don't know, LSQR on consensus, some Ekrilov subspace method um, on consensus dynamics? So. Yeah, yeah. I haven't thought um, too much. Like, as you get more complex, the bridge just becomes a little harder for me to make. Mm -hmm. um, We've been more focused, like, to be honest, we've been more motivated by the opinion dynamic side, like taking models over there and then, you know, trying to find their natural counterpart in numerical and algebraic methods. And, and typically, like, you know, the models that people develop on the opinion dynamic side are really these like row or column subset. Like they're, mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. very simple projection or relaxation type methods. Um, so yeah, I haven't thought too much about like, if you try to go to these more complex um, numerical and algebraic methods and pull those over what that looks like. Right, fair enough. I, but the deeper connection is the fact that it can be formulated as a least squares. I, I, everything else is, I mean, I'm not, not a corollary, but definitely that's the, that's the starting point. So, um, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yeah, I, I want to ask, uh, so you made a comment uh, on one of the, uh, the slides at, uh, towards the end. Uh, you mentioned like there could be some uh, applications uh, for Laplacian system-based solvers. Uh, do you have anything particular in mind uh, for that kind of thing? So um, this is a little bit where I, I think the, uh, the opposite direction of the bridge might be interesting. So, um, you know, the these Laplacian system solvers, um, uh, iterative methods that that act on and, and kind of efficiently solve the um, Laplacian style systems um, look like a lot like some of the dynamics that happen um, in in um, yeah, in, in like the opinion, I'm, I'm primarily right. thinking a lot recently about the opinion dynamics models. Right. And so it, it had me wondering whether, um, you know, for example, in the opinion dynamics world, they're often interested in saying things like, um, to what state do we get? Um, and uh, does it happen? You know, can you can you actually combinatorially uh, bound the number of steps that it requires? And so my like, you know, this is a big reach, but um, I think it would be interesting to see if kind of the opposite direction of porting results could happen, that we could say something good about these Laplacian system solvers um, by see. pulling the, the results from opinion dynamics. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions for the speaker? Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.